James, I've come to speak with you on a matter of grave importance. Oh, what is it, John? Uh, well, as you know, as the blacksmith in this town, I, I make a good living, and, uh... James Winthrop, I come today to ask you for your daughter Abigail's hand in marriage. Absolutely not! She's 14 years old! <laughs> it's out of the question. I see. Uh, uh, well, in that case, I've come to ask for your mother's hand in marriage. <laughs> John, I say this to you only because you are a friend and I care about you. No. I see. Uh, in that case, I've come to ask for this bag of flowers hand in marriage. <laughs> what? James, I'm so lonely. You don't know what it's like to be a single man in this colony. All the women are either married or spoken for. Yes, but a bag of flour. It's just I got all dressed up and all. I thought... <laughs> but you're right. No matter how desperate... What kind of man would sink to those depths? More ale, my dear? <laughs> <laughs> the word is the supply ship should be docking any day now. And guess what's on it? Someone here was so desperate for companionship that they sent away to England for a mail-order bride. <laughs> Joking, what kind of idiot would order a wife like he'd order a plow? <laughs> oh. But let's say this guy had a coupon. Oh, no, Cotton, you didn't. Why do people always say that to me? I know it's hard to get women to come to America, but what do you think you were gonna get? Oh, no. They're supposed to be very nice. Here, listen. After a hard day in the New World, do you come home to an empty house and long for female companionship? It's like they can read my mind. <laughs> Here at the London Bridal Exchange, we have a warehouse full of beauteous and obedient maidens just waiting to be yours, not available in stores. Free delivery. <laughs> Could I not marry her? <laughs> marry who? You don't even know what you're getting. How do you know she's not a criminal or a heretic or unattractive? <laughs> no, Dr. Addington. They sent me this lovely woodblock carving of her. <laughs> well, her eyes are haunting. <laughs> Doesn't even look like a person. Oh, Cotton, how could he fall for this swindle? You're just jealous. My sweetheart and I will be very happy. Uh, working side by side on the farm. Someone to mend my clothes, cook my meals, split the firewood. Oh, darling, how I love you so. <laughs> Cotton, you are aware that you're talking to a piece of wood. Watch your mouth. This piece of wood happens to represent the woman I love. I'm sorry, what's her name? In the catalog, it was number three. <laughs> Squirming, William. Remember what happened to Abigail. I think the bleeding stopped. But I'm telling you, my bangs are uneven. You don't want your hair to be too attractive. Remember, boys are only after one thing. Hair? Oh, I see it's haircut day. Stay where you are, you're next. You have been cutting my hair since I was a small boy. I am now old enough to decide myself when I need a haircut. Sit down. Not too much off the sides. <laughs> smells delicious, Polly. It's wonderful of you to take all this on, preparing the wedding feast, baking the cake. Oh, I'm happy to do it. After the year this colony has had of hardship and struggle, it's thrilling to finally have something to celebrate. Don't get your hopes up. The minute that mail order strumpet sees that dumb, stupid half witch, he'll jump in the bay and swim back to England. <laughs> You better do a good job on that cake. We Puritans don't get a chance to have cake very often. Don't make it dry. Make it moist and rich with just a soup song of cinnamon. Mother Winthrop, why don't you bake the cake? Me? What do I know about cake? Yeah, the cake will be fine. You look a little shabby there, Polly. Want to touch up? No, thank you. Well. Nobody wants a haircut here. I'm going to the stocks and 
Give them a trim. <laughs> they can't object. Polly! We know you're a bit busy today. And everything looks scrumptious. But where's the cake? The cake is baking out in the oven. It'll be ready in time, but I really have a lot of work to do. Oh, we understand. We understand perfectly. What kind of cake is it? A ginger cake. Mm, my favorite. <laughs> Mother, does that mean the big men are going to eat all the cake? Listen to me! everyone is looking forward to the cake, but leave me alone or there won't be any. She shouldn't even joke about such things. Oh, the stew is not quite right. Why did I try to make stew? The stew is awful. No one likes my stew. I like your stew. Thank you, William, but you eat mud. <laughs> Are we having mud? Well, what do you think? Cotton, you look nice. Thank you. Yes, he does, doesn't he? Oh. I'm on my way to see my bride for the first time. What a glorious day. Oh, James, finally, a partner for the farm to follow my every order. <laughs> oh, and I only have to do half the work I do now and have twice the fun. <laughs> but just a second, you do understand that marriage isn't all fun and games. It's not? No, sometimes marriage is work, as much work as tending a farm or toiling in the fields. Ah, I hate toiling in the fields. That's why I want a wife. And of course, she will help you, but there will also be times of great frustration. Times when you say black and she says white. Times when you want to pull your hair out. Times when you say, ah, there's my sweetie. <laughs> How's it all going? Well, this feast is hard work, but apparently not as much work as your marriage. That was just a warning to someone not lucky enough to marry the perfect woman. By which I mean you, scrummykins. Oh, stew smells good. Oh, no, it doesn't. You're just saying that to change the subject. I mean, that is the worst stew that I've ever made. Oh, dear, it is not. Oh, really, James? No, remember that stew you made for my birthday? <laughs> Mother, the cake is burning. Oh, Abigail, I thought I told you to watch it. I fell asleep. Do you know how boring it is to watch a cake? I hope my advice to you has helped. Helped? All you're doing is bringing me down. You better have got me a great wedding present. It's a new plow. What do I need a plow for? I'm getting a wife! Mmm, cake. I like weddings, Mother. How come I wasn't invited to yours? Well, William, mommies and daddies usually get married before they have babies. How come? I'll field this one. <laughs> It's true. Some mommies and daddies do have babies before they get married. But we stone those couples to death. <laughs> Tell us about your wedding, Father. Well, it was the happiest day of my life. Yeah. Once I got you out from under the bed. <laughs> now, now, Mother, no one wants to hear that old story. What story? About how James almost backed out of your wedding. Funny, I never heard that one. <laughs> it's only that I take marriage so seriously. I wanted to be sure that I wasn't making a, a mistake. Daddy looks funny. <laughs> oh, this is the worst day of my life. What? Wasn't your bride on the ship? No, she was there. But nothing like what I imagined. You were right, James. I've been swindled. <gasps> Look at her. <laughs> what help is she gonna be on the farm? She's so thin. Yeah, she couldn't even carry any of her bags. Maybe they didn't have much food on the boat. I mean, she'll beef up. I don't know. I offered her some salted fish on the way over, and she asked me how many calories were in it. <laughs> what the hell is a calorie? Hello. I'm Polly Winthrop, and welcome to Plymouth. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've personally prepared today's elaborate wedding feast, and, of course, the cake. Oh, I don't eat cake. <laughs> I don't eat wheat, red meat, or any dairy products. What other kind of food is there? 
Let's all gather for the ceremony. No, 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 no. Oh, James, what should I do? Don't touch a book by its cover. But the cover's so skinny. Look at those collarbones. I could lose an eye. Put yourself together, man. Now, come on. Dear friends, we gather today so that this man may take this woman. <laughs> Weddings always make me cry. Yeah, it's too bad there isn't a bed for you to hide under. I wasn't hiding, I was looking for my... my... Spine? Oh, whatever it was, you have it in your hands now. <laughs> and by the laws of God, and by the laws of the Plymouth Colony, I now pronounce you man and wife. Now, where's the cake? <laughs> the cake? I left it outside to cool. <gasps> of course a porcupine is eating the cake, because that's the kind of day it was. Is there a backup cake? No. Oh, oh, my mistake. My mistake. It's all my mistake. Just like James made a mistake marrying me. Oh, Polly, look on the bright side. The porcupine finished the whole thing. You must have loved that cake. <laughs> when a porcupine eats your wedding cake, only bleakness and misery will follow you to the end of your day. <laughs> Cheers! Fresh from his wedding night, there's always a glow of a, ooh, you don't look any different. Mm. That's because nothing happened. She said she was too tired from the long voyage. Uh, and, and, and she said, what's the phrase? Lips that touch mutton will never touch mine. Ah, <laughs> oh, James, there you are. I need some help, I need some advice. Now is not a good time, my friend. Polly and I have just had our first fight. You've been married for over 15 years and you just had your first fight? Rose and I had three before we made it back to my cabin. That's not good. You want advice, ask me. I was married for 47 years. Wow, you're old. <laughs> so, what's the secret to a happy marriage? Happy? <laughs> ah. What's wrong with your generation? Always looking for happiness. When I was your age, happiness hadn't even been invented yet. But on a good day, you had to spare, and you were glad to have it. What does that have to do with my problem? Don't you understand? Your marriage is doomed. A porcupine ate your wedding cake. <laughs> James? Polly? James. Polly. James. Oh, Polly. Isn't anyone going to say cotton? I'm standing right here. <laughs> wait, 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 I still haven't had a Now you're standing right there. Here, let me take that for you, my Thank dear. You. Oh, Polly. If I said anything to upset you, I apologize a thousand times. Oh, no, 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 it was my fault. I should never have been so sensitive. No, no, it was me. No matter how irrational you were being, I should have handled it better. Oh, you thought it was irrational? What's happening to us? You know, I, I don't know. It's like there's some kind of tension in the air that's never been there before. Well, what should we do? Well, maybe we should talk to someone. Maybe we should. But whom? <laughs> well. <laughs> there you are. Husband and wife in marital turmoil, taunted by the devil at every turn. Uh, Reverend, if I may, the devil really isn't the problem in the relationship. It's, it's more a matter of not being in touch with each other's needs. Needs? <laughs> needs are the devil's playground. Reverend, I don't mean to complain. But that's the seventh time you've called something the devil's playground since we sat down. It's a very large playground. 
was hoping that maybe you could help us express our frustrations. Oh, children, children, children. Nobody ever said that the union of marriage was easy. You worry that you're not understood. And you are concerned that you're taken for granted. When all both of you really need is a good, old-fashioned exorcism. <laughs> Three days of starvation and beatings with willow wands will chase all these troubles away. Well, I think that's uh, terrific advice, but um, we really must check our schedules. <laughs> well, we have to try to find someone to watch the children, you know, which is always a problem with a three-day exorcism. So, um, we'll get back to you. Go in peace. <laughs> Well, devil, who won that round? Uh, Elizabeth, you're smart. I try. What do you do when you realize that your marriage is a huge mistake? Well, I'm only 10, so my experience with men has been rather limited. But since you've been married for less than 24 hours, you could get the marriage absolved. Annulled. Mm. Invalidated. I'm getting nothing. It's like it never happened. Oh, great. Thanks, Shorty. You could have bought something. Here are your seats, Mr. and Mrs. Tungsley, and thank you for shopping at Winthrop's. Where else would we shop? It's the only store around. Well, have a nice day. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> nothing. You know what they say. The customer's always right. I've had just about enough of you. So, was the Reverend able to help you put your crumbling marriage back together? How does everyone know our business? Well, you know how word gets around a small town. Besides, it's posted on the community board. <laughs> what? Wednesday, women's Thursday, 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 Friday, James and Polly Winthrop's marriage in trouble. Who puts this thing out anyway? The people have a right to know, Father. <laughs> Now, don't you kids worry why. Alice and I have even been married longer than you have. You should do what we do when things get rough. Oh, please tell us. We go for a walk. Uh, what do you do on this walk? Why do you always have to make things so complicated? Just go on a walk. <laughs> Bye. I say hello to your 12 children. Oh, we will. Great, now the whole night's shot. <laughs> Go on a walk. You know, mother and father, a walk might give you some time to really listen to each other. For most women, conversation is a way of establishing connections and negotiating relationships, while for men, it's a way of maintaining status in an authoritative social order. Where do you come up with this? It's an essay I'm working on. I call it, Men Are From Plymouth, Women Are From Jamestown. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a way back to the village. And I'm telling you, we're going around in circles. Look, I'm the pioneer here. I've learned to read the signs of nature. For example, moss is growing on that side of the tree, which means that way is north. And is the village north of here? Well, that I don't know. <laughs> but I do know we're not lost. That way is north, and if we keep heading in that direction, then eventually... We'll die facing north? <laughs> I I'm sorry. James, I don't know why I've been so tense lately. Oh, wait, James, look. What? I thought this clearing seemed familiar. This is where you and I came when we first landed at Plymouth. Is it? Yes. We took a walk in the woods and got lost. <laughs> That's right. And we both lay down under this old tree and... and we christened the new world. Mm, yes, I remember. We christened it three times. <sighs> Well, it had been a long voyage. <laughs> oh, what a marvellous day that was. Although it's always a little scary to move to a new neighbourhood. That's it. What? That is why we have been so tense and sharp with each other lately. Oh, we have worked so hard over this past year of building a new home and taking care of the children that we haven't stopped and realised... What are we doing? You're right. We are in a wild, untamed land, completely cut off from civilization. We are. Who am I kidding? I'm just a shopkeeper. And I don't know anything about plowing fields and hunting bears. We're both totally unsuited for this. We are. So this underlying tension we're both feeling has nothing to do with you or me. No, no, no. no, no. It, it, 
It's absolute terror. <laughs> oh, James. It feels so good to finally let that out. I didn't want you to know. I... Oh, no, no, James, promise me. Let's never be brave for each other again. I will be your coward if you'll be mine. <laughs> oh, Polly. The best thing I ever did was to come out from under that bed. Ah, James, Polly. Oh. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> How the hell did you find us? I just followed the path in from town. You're only about a hundred yards from your store. <laughs> so, what are you two doing? Oh, oh, uh, well, we were starting to make up, so oh. if you just want to go back to the... Well, club. you won't believe what happened to me. <laughs> I finally get up the nerve to break up with Rose. I walk into my cabin, and she's gone. She left you? Yeah, and I found this Dear John letter. Here, I'll read it to you. Dear John, I'm leaving my husband Cotton and running away with you. All my love, Rose. <laughs> Can you believe she left this behind? Uh, Cotton, I'm sorry. But maybe it's fate. Maybe this is to teach you that true love cannot be ordered through the mail. It can only grow through time and trial. Come on, let's go home. Mm. Guys, it's that way. Oh, oh. Right, right. That moss thing's no help at all. <laughs> I know I've only known you for 24 hours, but I've never been more in love. And I feel the same way. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> Stay tuned. Thanks. We'll be right back. Gail, slow down at your third bowl of porridge. What are you doing? I'm trying to put on weight. I don't want to be all skinny like that mail order bride. <laughs> it must be horrible to have to go through life looking like that. <laughs> you know, Abigail, someday society's view of beauty might change. A woman who is considered round and ripe today might one day be called a frumpy house frau, while Rose's emaciated waif-like look might become the height of... You're right. It's ridiculous. 